Welcome to Shattered Ships, brought to you by Fandom Encounters. This is your DM Matt, guiding you on your pirate adventure through the seas of Corsair. Join our party, the human fey wanderer ranger Tesha Gwyn, played by Bobby. The sea elf pirate Kensei monk Trigger, played by Seth. And the Owlin swords bard, played by Alan as they do their best to navigate this new world and find their place in it. In Corsair, where piracy is freedom, and freedom is dangerous. Last time on Shattered Shit, I, I think about that one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Surprising no one. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't... <laughs> It's the investigator. You don't feel like you can participate uh, until you understand everything because you feel like you're outside. Well, see, that's why I like the, like, that's why I like the INFJ, ENFP, because they got names to it. Oh, you're the, you're the campaigner. But you're the that, advocator. That was made by people who didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. You know what? That's fair. You know what? Who knows what they're talking about? I learned about it in, I think it was one of my leadership classes in college. I forget which one it was. Huh? I started, I started off really strong, but then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> How five of you? <laughs> Are you a wing? You know what your what's your wing? I don't remember. I was trying. I was trying to remember. And I was like, yeah. I th I feel like I, I I feel like I took this the one day at work where you. Had I would be so it. gagged <laughs> if you were a five wing four. That's all I'm saying. I just think I. <laughs> that kind of sounds familiar. So I'm not like the sensitive emotional it. one versus the paranoid one. Yeah, who's to say? Depends on the day. Yeah. Um, but yes, last time our crew, whose enneagrams are yet to be determined, uh, <laughs> went through, uh, continued their day of tasks. Um, seemingly, the day without any curse facing was more stressful than fighting ghosts. Um, as last time they uh, connected, or they wrapped up things with Doubt the Dryad, ran into some local skaters... Uh, before meeting with Gilda Deepmaw, a conversation that um, affirmed some things that they believed, but also many of the party, then they can then communicate it to everyone else, um, got the sense that Gilda is hiding uh, a few things. Namely, she was aware of more um, recent attempts to leave the island than she is owning up to. Um, what that means, uh, you are not exactly sure of. Uh, but as we wrapped up last time, we were headed towards the Forgotten Escape. I uh, think that was the at least the direction um, we had finished up with talking to Gilda. Is there any uh, thing Gilda's keep uh, you guys would like to discuss or chat with? Uh, you passed Lance outside. Uh, Lance is who has like curse breaking assignments. Um, you requested the aid of some sort of tracker um, in the future to help you track down who stole uh, Lester's magical items. And Lance and uh, Gilda are going to try to look into that for you guys. Uh, and Lance promised to come to you guys with uh, Veritas assignments in the future. I don't think anything back at Gilda's. I think I was like good, like heading out, heading to um, the Forgotten Escape. Yeah, but we're just gonna get the amulet working, right? And then we're gonna go home. Yeah, I think that was. I mean, I we've done. This day has felt like forever. It's, a, it's yeah, been a long day. Absolutely. I don't, we haven't even like done any curse shit. We've just been like doing like chores. Fuck. Wait, is this what chores is? Kinda. I'll let you. Well, once you have to take out the trash, then then we do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on the on the ship, we just kind of throw, you know, people and stuff overboard. But like, I can I can take the trash out too. That's fine. Okay. It's more like if chores is like always gonna be this mentally exhausting. I just don't want to do chores so much. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. You are the fastest though. You think so? And you have a skateboard. Yeah. Okay, oh, if but... you had a mail route, oh, you get so much money. You get it um, done in like two minutes. Yeah. Or, what's a mail route? We explain that on the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you pass by, or as you point out the fact that if anyone had messages, you could tack them to the doors. As you make your way to the Forgotten Escape, the familiar haunt to the party uh, by now. 
Uh, entering inside, you feel, you hear, like, you smell the familiar smells of kettles uh, cooking, radiating throughout the place. It's uh, on the later end here now, so there's definitely, like, food to be had. There's a few people here, some of the dock workers. You'll probably, like, bubble, probably, this sea dwarf you've worked with before. Uh, maybe you recognize him. He'll, like, raise a drink as you guys kind of walk in, recognizing people he's sided with in the past. Um, like usual, Pluck, um, one of Skip and Marilyn's kids, is playing uh, his uh, is playing his lute on the stage. Uh, Kettle's running orders, as well as Bash, the tiefling child. Um, and Marilyn and Skipshot are running the running their inn. Um, when you guys kind of walk in, Marilyn looks over at you all and kind of like, okay, like, yeah, come on in. Uh, like, points to a table. Like, yeah, there's a table for you guys. Don't worry about it. Uh... Uh, kind of giving you a little bit of direction before she starts, like, like puts a plate down in front of the quartermaster from the ship um, that you guys sailed with, who still is here, hasn't been able to kind of secure anything, uh, but he's just over in the corner drinking. Let's say he's over by the stage and he's chatting with Pluck. Uh, just this big half-orc uh, with one arm now. Uh, as Marilyn kind of drop, like, drops what she's doing over with them and kind of comes over to you all. Welcome. Hey, Marilyn. Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you, Trigger. Um, hey. Uh, you Did you know that it's more important to have, like, a publicly funded system of communication than an independently owned capitalistic one? Because a lot of times they'll put a monopoly on that. Or at least that's what Kachi was just saying. Uh, I suppose. I mean, it makes sense, Kachi. Uh, coming, hailing from Morales, it's, uh, that's the system they have in place for a lot of things, actually. Yeah. It's sort of the way a lot of the businesses run. You know, really, yeah. when you get into it, like, you know, you have one monopoly controlling everything, then things get, they can jack up the prices. But if you disperse that wealth over, you know, everyone's like trickle down economics, but it's not really going from anywhere to anywhere. You really just got to like, let it be with the people, you know? Yeah. That's why everybody gets equal shares of the booty. I suppose that is very it's honorable, sure. isn't it? So, uh, were you thinking of opening, starting a business, Trigger? Oh, no. I don't want to fill out any forms, mostly because I don't know how to write. We're teaching them, yeah. Oh, Although, I guess, ethically, it is probably best to have somebody who runs your mail who cannot read. Uh, I suppose so. You wouldn't, no one would have to worry about you uh, sort of uh, eavesdropping or uh, spying on their mail. So if I have any letters to deliver, mm -hmm. deliver I'll come to you. Thanks. <laughs> cool. They told you, a great mail guy. <laughs> Uh, but no, Marilyn. It's, if this is the, too busy right now, we can uh, we can come back oh, in a bit. Not, or not, like, not at all. Uh, Bash, Bash, can you watch the floor for me? Thank you, darling. Uh, it calls over to her kid, and uh, Bash starts kind of taking plates for her mom. Um, did you guys want? Uh, you can have a bite to go if you like. Uh, Kettle got some food brewing in the kitchen. That if you just follow me, that would be lovely. Absolutely. We've had a, a bit of a day. <laughs> yeah. So, Oh, and the, the five kebabs I had on the way over here is just not enough. You're going, boy, of course. Uh, what? Yes. what? Did you not mean? No, no so, it's sort of, it's sort of a phrase. Uh, when elves reach about your age trigger, they start to sort of mature. Um, I wouldn't expect to see you sh uh, sprouting up. You'll be taller than I am in no time. I'd shrink lower to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're already taller than my oldest, and she kind of like points over towards Kettle. Just keep stretching. You don't want to like, you know, get your hips to lock up. You know, once <laughs> you get to like, I don't know, 120. Uh, skip over in the deck. Says like, "Amen to that." <laughs> uh, he gets it. I look at Skipshot, and I my eyes go wide because I saw him die two hours ago. <laughs> 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 I literally Here he is, happily I'm like, uh, washing some glasses. <laughs> and I like kind of nudge to, I nudge Gwyn. Hey. Do you remember you did that? Yeah, that was a dream. And we shouldn't tell anyone about that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, oh, oh yes, but uh, uh come along, uh grab some bowls for you, which I grab some like uh grab some plates for you guys. Uh uh, eating in the havens, all right. It's all sort of a grove. Birds and animals will pick up whatever you guys drop. No worries. Uh, as Marilyn leads you all back towards sort of this um, 
magic vase that you guys have used before to visit like the humble abode of the family beside instead of like the inn. Um, Marilyn pulls out two white chrysanthemums, um, class, like passes one to the group. Like, uh, if you ever need anything, uh, or safe place or a quiet place, feel free to stop by. Uh, and then she puts hers into the vase, and like in your all, all of your proximity, you there's this flash of white as the chrysanthemum enters into the vase, and before you know it, this glowing green arcane lantern is blazing. Um, it is currently fastened, not inside of a uh, simple table in a hallway, but it is fastened to a tree um, sitting in the woods. It feels um, dark, but not in the way it was as you guys were sort of like walking through the nighttime of Cursed Cove towards the Forgotten Escape. There's like fireflies kind of drifting through the air uh, as like kind of illuminating this place. There's these glowing mushrooms and fungi kind of forming a circle on the ground around you. And this like liminal space is surrounded by trees in what feels like a very calming presence. Um, whoever would like to, as you enter this space with Marilyn, give me a religion check. What are we having? Twelve. Eleven. I I don't even believe in gods. Yeah. Um. It yeah. feel it feels um. It, there is something about this that feels uh, like almost like sanctimonious of like a like of a like church like state. Not that it's shaped like a cathedral. There's no stained glass. But there's something about it. Like the way these trees are kind of overgrown and forming this canopy feels like this calming, connected presence. Um, but as Marilyn kind of steps through, um, she kind of positions herself um, across from the uh, flame here um, and like arranges herself where these mushrooms are and kind of like sits down. And open like inside of her, like her work apron, pulls out the uh, amulet and sets it out in front of her. Um, so, welcome, uh, I suppose, first and foremost to my haven. I uh, there is uh, a bit to explain before I can help you unlock this amulet. I've made the right connections to the people that I do know, and they've agreed to sort of help me and help you. Uh, so long as they have a chance to uh, to vet you or to, uh, to to trust that you have the good of Corsair in mind. Uh, so you three lovely individuals, uh, I am what is known as I'm double checking because I said I said it wrong in a text once. Five. I am what is known as a keeper. There are a number of us that are de dedicated to a certain domain that overlooks certain aspects of this world in the absence of gods. When I met Jody, Gwyn, I knew it was a lie. Because the true light domain keeper is a friend of mine, Lissa. Senna, sorry, Senna. Uh, and she is she's one of those I was able to reach out to to connect with uh, to hopefully help you all embrace some of the powers of the Keepers. The reason we can do this is because there is a vacancy in our uh, sort of group. The only other Keeper that has ever made it to Cursed Cove was in fact a tiefling named Violette. She was the Twilight Keeper. In her passing, that is whose amulet you've brought to me, there are still remnants of this divine magic that we all wield. Uh, I am and she kind of gestures up and around her. I am the keeper of nature. 
Uh, no real surprise there, I suppose. Um, so through, I will become a conduit through which you can communicate with the rest. They will vet you in a way that sort of we were all vetted at a certain point. So uh, impress them and you will have allies uh, beyond Cursed Cove uh, and they can channel their sort of magic, their healing, the knowledge into assisting you all here and beyond. Quick, quick question about that, actually. So I would be surprised if there were none. Uh, oh, God. That's so many. Okay, so oh, have a seat. Have you, a seat. Yeah, just like sit down. Like birds never sit like a crisscross applesauce, but <laughs> you like roosted, so you're just, like sitting like on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hold on. So you're connected with these other clerics, but you're on the island, but you can talk to them off the island. But you're connected to nature, but like all nature, or like just nature on the island. Um, I I wouldn't say I'm connected to sort of every tree or every plant or everything out there in Corsair. If there is, if nature is being thrown into uh, chaos, if it's being unbalanced, uh, nature has a way of notifying you uh, as like uh, it's not necessarily destructive. Sort of uh, with Ithinglass, it's a living volcano. Morales has these enormous trees growing. If someone were to, say, start clear-cutting the forests of Cragland for some sort of conquest, I would eventually come to know that. And as a keeper of nature, it would probably be within my responsibility to try to do something about it. In honesty, being trapped here does prevent me from sort of fulfilling a lot of my duties, but my connection to the other keepers hasn't enabled me to leave, un uh, unfortunately. But you can talk to people outside of the island? Uh, I can talk to certain people outside of the island, the other keepers. Uh, through a ritual, I can bring people I trust with me. Um, so uh, there was, uh, when, they were, when uh, Kettle was younger, they got sick. And so uh, I was able to communicate with a friend of mine uh, who was then able to talk me through a healing process and we found the herbs we needed. Uh, it was a great resource um, as we reached out to sort of um, the, uh, the keeper of knowledge. Uh, had knowledge of these medicines and things so in times of need I can reach out but it's not as easy as sort of a uh, sending a message to someone uh, I suppose sending could probably do it as well but uh, yeah. with Lester sort of uh, you, you mentioned that there was a vacancy yes. that happened what is or is there a procedure typically to replace um, um, that the, the vacancy keepers? The Keepers, by our very nature, are... We do our best not to always be known. We have... There is a base that the other Keepers tend to frequent, tend to meet at. Um, but it is uh, protected, it is mysterious, it's enchanted. It's uh, said to be one of the last places that the Collectors, the gods who created Corsair, one of the last places they touched. So it has that lingering divine magic. And so they protect it so that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, it's enchanted. Actually, the knowledge keeper stays there, sort of creating these wards and things. So it's always going to be hidden away. Uh, should things go well, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, it's a place that perhaps you could find uh, refuge. You could find protection if you needed it. Okay. As, so as allies of the keeper. And should, uh, I suppose, by taking part in this ritual with the knowledge of being a keeper, should any of the three of you see that in your future, uh, it would be a path available to you as well. And what kind of keepers could we be? Like, could I be like the keeper of piracy? <laughs> um, give me... Give me a wisdom check. Seven. Um, you know, I have never heard of a keeper of piracy. There isn't one. 
Uh, typically it falls into sort of established domains, but if someone was as powerful as perhaps you could be one day, I don't see why they wouldn't be, you couldn't create your own domain. In theory, if a god of piracy existed, yes, there could then be an order to, and then from that, a new position would open. I, yeah, but that doesn't exist, so it doesn't really matter. It was a stupid question. It doesn't exist yet. Trigger. Well, yeah, but like the closest thing to a god is basically the Cyclops, so we're not there. I have a feeling there's much more powerful people in the world besides yes, this. Agree. Hey, why don't you you shut your dirty whore mouth, okay? <laughs> Yo, watch out! We have a woman present. Come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you I've, shut your dirty. I've killed yeah. so many people. Yeah, I know. We're just trying to. We're just trying to keep him from like you know, kind of. Yeah, honestly, the best sailors that I know on board the ship, mostly women. Kachi, my son is a bar. Uh, nothing surprises me. Anymore. No, no, it's not like a surprising thing. It's just like we're really trying to keep Trigger from, you know, going for like ex- exploit, ex- exploit, uh, the big, Honestly, big naughty words. There might be like a creative god, and maybe you can draw for them. Yeah, you're very drawer. Oh, yeah. Maybe we I lead a life away from piracy towards the arts. There's a domain. Of peace. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! I take out my gun and I kind of circle it on my <laughs> finger. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, drawing still a hobby. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I I don't want to quit drawing. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So, how did you become dedicated to the domain of nature? Nice. When I was I, when I was young, I lived on sort of the elven continent uh, and uh, lived nearby the woods, took care of them as much as I could. My parents were healers, uh, and there was a plague that sort of, called, sort of came through the uh, forest, this bad case of sort of wood blight that began to spread throughout the forests. Everyone um, thought that uh, tending to it, studying it, they offered prayers to the gods who haven't been on Corsair for centuries. Uh, but I, it was a small village, so we didn't have a lot of resources. We just was just the, sort of the epicenter of something that could have been uh, far worse. I was a young elf, uh, less than a century year old, but I still had some knowledge and creativity to me. So I uh, went and I started a fire, uh, burnt a circle of trees around those that were infected and kept it from spreading. Uh, it. Uh, it cost the lives, I suppose, if understanding is to be done that way, of a few hundred trees, uh, some animals and plants and small things, but it saved the rest of the forest. Those in my village didn't quite understand. Uh, they thought I had, uh, they thought me a crazed teenager of sorts. But there was, I remember I was asleep and this talking deer sort of appeared to me. Uh, and uh, not even really with words, but just an understanding passed from it to I that I hadn't done, in fact, done a service to uh, the world of Corsair. Uh, I left my village, I traveled the world a bit, and made my way to the Western Spire. It was sort of a beacon that had begun, and I was someone inspired by nature to follow it. Other keepers have a similar story. Uh, a miracle, something uh, powerful that's not completely understood, a curse, they receive a calling, and they answer it. I suppose in that way, keepers are... Becoming a keeper is not unlike becoming a hero, becoming a captain, Trigger. It's seeing a void, seeing a need, and being brave enough to step into that place. What do I know about Western Spire? Um, give me a history check, but it would be with disadvantage. Right. Oh, disadvantage. I don't know why I think I have all these intelligence skills. Like I keep looking. <laughs> oh, this is the one I'm proficient in. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. I don't <laughs> uh, nine. <laughs> Um, you don't know anything about it, but even with a nine, you, your parents are merchants, 
you've like you had to make your way to the north. You've seen maps before, mm. and you don't remember seeing Western Spire anywhere. Oh. Okay. Um, it seems like every member of the Keepers are, like, by design, spread out to the different cities. Is that true? Uh, we spend most of Cool Ser, if I'm being honest. I There are some that I was closer with than others for a time. But uh, yes, we, by design, tend to spread out. We all will typically have a haven such as this. It took me a while to build this up inside of Cursed Cove. But with this, we can sort of commune with each other and connect in that way, in a less than tangible sense, being able to sort of relay messages and that sort of thing. Have any of your Keeper friends ever tried to come and help and rescue us? I have always been hesitant to invite Violet reached out, pleaded uh, for aid. Um, I know one of our member, one of our members is one of the spotted dozen. Uh, the pirate that sort of sailed the waters. She's been nearby, has sailed close, um, but with her connection to sort of arcane magic, she was uh, unable to sense a safe way in. Uh, Who is it? Who is it? Um, the Kistic, the Mystic. Uh, and like uh, Trigger, you definitely have heard like of Kistic, the Mystic. Where would they rank on the on the ranking? Um, I forgot. I actually took them off the rankings, but I'm gonna put them back on. Um, they are number nine. Now. They're not pretty. They're not very strong. It's okay. We don't need their help. What was the Cyclops ranked at? The Cyclops is ranked at number five, That's which is that. only because it gets like super political, and there's like you know they have to try to keep some of the high rollers down a little bit just to, so you know, just to kind of keep humble. Makes sense. Mm. Yeah. He keep telling you that. He doesn't need to. Okay. <laughs> I know how these okay. things work. All right, yeah, very smart. You, you know your politics. Do you, these people just like live there? Like, do you, do you know the Morales Keeper? Like, is that a thing? Like, I know Archtown's big, so I doubt I know the person. But yeah, could I think if I like knew of anyone like this, like in Morales? I mean, Morales is also like not as big a city as like Archtown, but like, like I would think like, like not to be like you and your domain. tree people just live in the woods, <laughs> yeah. but like. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna see. I'm, I'm gonna just make, a poor city boy, a I'm poor country a boy. See if, if someone does live there. Um, give me a history check, Kachi. Okay. Okay. Uh, eighteen. <laughs> um, you, um, thinking of like Marilyn's connection, this power, this sort of radiance. Um, you, like the, the leader of like Morales, like it changes occasionally, like almost like seasonally different people kind of take over. It's a very shared position, but there is like an advisor who's been seen uh, on occasion uh, helping out uh, Morales, helping him Morales probably for as long as like you remember while growing up. Um, is kind of seeing this figure in Morales. Um, they tend to uh, stand out a bit. Um, you probably never talked to them because they are a little off-putting. There is, it's this sort of small, uh, you remember a small halfling who um, acted as the advisor in Morales. They would do um, sort of uh, an advisory capacity. They're like the like guards in Morales aren't exactly guards because it's a fairly like peace driven city itself. Um, but you've heard of like people who are really sick got he got like they went to go see Loam Underfoot, and that was like the smallest person who lived in the Luxedon town. So like two like almost like two cities away from you were in the, in, in like the canopy. The Luxedon live on the ground live on the ground. So did Loam Underfoot. And with an 18, I'll say that probably, like, maybe, like, your grandma got sick at some point, and because she was such, like, an important figure in the town, everyone, like, forced her, basically, 
to go down to like see someone who was a little more capable than just like your average healer. Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. Do you know Loam Underfoot? Uh, yes, uh, Loam is a member of the Order. Uh, they sort of oversee the peace uh, aspect of this. Have do you, do you know Loam? I mean, I I don't know Loam personally, but like Loam is always in morale. It's like it, you yes. know, it, it's just strange for someone so. living that in like sense. the the Loxodon, you know, yes. area because like you know, a bunch of elephants. Like you don't want to get stepped on, but like they were always like at it, like always knew where to go and where to yes. step. Uh, Loam was always an interesting one uh, for someone who is who speaks so heavily of the domain of peace. Um, mm. The connection to the macabre is also very uh, profound. Wait, you're telling me that there's a peacekeeper, but there's not like a pirate keeper? Oh, gosh, this group sucks. I said, okay. I think there's a war. There's someone dedicated to war. Really? I'm not familiar with them as much. It's sort of no. It's a sort of a coworker relationship. I'm not sure who they are. <laughs> cool. Coral. What's their name? That sounds like an important one to know. Mistake, and then like we start war. Not to be like name every person ever, but yeah, I'm not gonna lie. For like a secret organization, you guys are pretty bad at like keeping this a secret. I now know at least three members. Ever tell anyone ever this ever? That I suppose brings us to step two. I've divulged (laughs) this much. Because I have come to trust the three of you. Um, you've, protected, First you've protected my family. You've um, uh, sort of you've inspired one of my children to sort of follow in a similar uh, direction, I suppose. Though she still loves cooking and curse breaking on the side. That's what you said. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but for this to proceed, I do need a promise from the three of you. There is no one more important to me than my family. Skip. Bash, pluck, and cattle are everything to me. I would love for my children to be able to see the world as I did. If putting my faith in you three could make that happen, I am happy to do so. I can help you connect to this amulet and awaken its powers so long as uh, to, uh, like, under your guidance, no harm comes to my family. So if you see pluck getting beaten up you would be bound to help him if the forbidden escape catches fire you would be bound if you were in the vicinity you would be sort of compelled to come and help my family as well oh yeah Giant curse we're gonna kill a bunch of people in town we have to immediately save you of course uh, we it, yeah. totally yeah it's, as it's long not yep, a selfless you're... promise I am not no it's okay your kids are safe with us your 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 kids are good. We got them, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. No, no, no. Sorry, course, didn't mean to have course, I was just. Uh, Should I just? I, I just. I didn't. There was a pause. Amazing uh, yeah. deal. Amazing deal. Amazing deal, though. Yeah. yeah so, oh gosh, yeah. You're. I was they're gonna be like asking for an insight check, but I know she's on the so it's like they're gonna be like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like. Like I will be a father to these you, children. They're your siblings. They're your siblings. You can you can care for them as siblings. I don't you know. Do, I think I'd be like a really good. Dad. I'd be a really good dad. I'm just well, gonna say it. I suppose Ooh. outside of elf years, elf years, you may be the oldest. Kettle may have you. Kettle might have you. How old's Kettle? Uh, Kettle's twenty-four. Oh, sh- I guess counting that to heart. That's gosh. Okay. Um, it's close. It's really close. To, and at that point, who can say? So you might as well just call me daddy. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't think that I will. If that's all right, we can come up with a different no. nickname. Too. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um. So, uh, I trust you to begin this journey to meet the keepers. They will have. There are trials to sort of pass through in order to step beyond the bodies you're in now into sort of speaking with uh, the representatives that uh, have made themselves available or will be making themselves available to you all. Um, Whoever you feel called to, please chase them. I don't know all of them personally, but as 
their participation in this organization proves that they can be trusted, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, whoever you feel drawn to, <clears throat> I encourage you to chase. Uh, I will be here as sort of a uh, grounding rod for all of you, so you can find your way back. We gotta do more stuff. Oh, gosh, why can't why can't why is nothing easy here? Okay. Uh, so sit with me. The first step of this journey uh, begins with the four of us, um, focusing in on your sort of material bodies here. Everyone, close your eyes. She kind of like, like even like at her whim, kind of like the mushrooms dim and like the candles kind of like glow down. The fireflies almost get sleepy. Our scars are lessons that we've picked up along the way. Hold in your mind, think back, and consider what has hurt you. And, uh, like, thinking in these memories, you kind of feel like, with your mind kind of going to one place or another, and Marilyn's like, open your eyes, you are still here with me. Uh, as a form of trust, and Marilyn kind of pushes up like the sleeve of her shirt and you see like this like like almost like this like reds kind of like scarring and striations that kind of goes from like elbow to forearm. Um, when I started those fires as a teenager, as a, as a young elf, uh, I was not fast enough to avoid the damage myself. I did get caught in the blades. I learned perhaps wisdom and preparation was something I needed to focus on. And that is a lesson I've learned from this scar. And she kind of closes, like, puts her hands down and kind of closes her eyes, uh, inviting any of you to share your story as well. I'll take off. Kachu will, like, take back a piece of his cloak for a wing that's not broken, still works, he can fly but it's just like, just, it's like when you can like overextend your arm because it broke at one point when you were a kid and then like the way it's like reconnected, yeah. Um, when I first entered the Arbor Forge, I got a little too hasty and accidentally brought a hammer on myself. Um, patience is a virtue and one I think I'm still learning on my want for perfection and myself. We live and we learn, right? <clears throat> Speaking this, Kachi, like this amulet that's been in the center of all of you kind of like glows with a silver light, kind of pulses for a moment before like dimming back down. Like Marilyn's kind of like reaches a hand, like in your direction, like says like if you want as like if you want to like like it's like thank you. When I was nine, I remember one night I woke up and I, my parents live above the store. So we went downstairs and I was, we were being robbed. And I remember like being threatened. So I just stood there and I didn't move, but I memorized every aspect of this person. And they were like covered up, but I memorized how they walked and more importantly, what shoes they were wearing. And I vividly, vividly gave a description the next morning to the city guard and he was caught and it was a scary moment but it was the first moment of where inactivity really saved my life a lesson learned a scar perhaps worn on the inside kind of like doesn't look at trigger but like kind of goes back kind of eyes closed like this amulet pulses and glows once more. Um, one time I got a splinter on the big toe and it hurt like a, like a helm with hemorrhoids. It was real bad. It, it, was, it was the worst. And um, uh, you can't see it because I got tough skin, but I'm better now because of it. Um, so all three of you, uh, having shared a story, give me a wisdom check. 
Um, if your story is true, uh, you can make it make it with advantage. If your story, if you're trying to lie to Marilyn, it's disadvantage. It is a what check? A wisdom check. I guess religion, if you have that. Uh, if anyone has that. Proficiency. Yes, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. 17. 14. 7. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Gwyn and Kachi, you begin to hear voices kind of in the trees around you. Um, all kind of saying this, like almost like this similar, like or just like a din, like kind of talk uh, here. Uh, and as Marilyn kind of looks, kind of between like, an eyebrow. And so, Trigger, is that really the lesson that you've learned? Um, I, I don't. I mean, I, I I've learned lots of stuff. Like uh, I've learned how to. Uh, shoot people at point blank range, and 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 I learned how to skateboard kind of recently. I don't really know what this has to do with anything. Thinking back to when you learned to shoot, Trigger, who taught you? Um. Oh. Um. Well, if, who do you remember anyway? <laughs> I, uh, I think Trigger gets um, a momentary flashback of something, uh, but it is not very defined. Um, uh, yeah, you were young, having flashes. I mean, um, you, you remember like the laughter of pirates, kind of like this raucous. Um, you probably don't like you don't remember anything beyond like your little body <laughs> and this gun. Like you don't remember what you were shooting at. You don't remember whose it was or what's around you. Um, give me like you probably remember like. The heavy hand, like you don't remember, like the like the Cyclops aura being here, but give me like a perception check or a history yeah. check as you're kind of remembering, like this memory kind of surges. Um, uh, uh, it's a fourteen. Um, uh, you like remember the the you shot this gun, and you felt camaraderie. Um, whether it was the myriad of pirates that you've thrown out, uh, like Draugr the dwarf, or it was the, the ones. We learned some more last night, or not last night, last time. Uh, you could probably Pasty Jane was probably alive back then. Uh, Pasty Jane was Pasty Jane was alive. So probably these um, people that you've uh, like have grown up with. Essentially, you remember like, oh yeah, firing this gun makes people like, me. and like not without even like saying anything. The amulet in front of you kind of pulses and glows, um, and Marilyn's just like, yes. Uh, not all of our scars are worn on the outside, uh, little one. Uh, you are worthy of you're worthy of friendship even without that pistol. And trigger two, you begin to hear these voices kind of calling from the edges of like your like perception, this ability, like this like uh, these voices, kind of this din of rolling from these voices outside. Um, it's all being said in different ways, but the word that you keep picking out from all of them, for all three of you, is fear, 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 facing your fears. Like, your, your fears are there. Fears are good. Fears are bad. Fears are there. Fears are there. Um, it's, uh, as Marilyn kind of goes quiet, um, the area in the tree, outside of this tree area, kind of begins to glow, and you feel the presence of other keepers here with you. Uh, if anyone is listening for a particular like domain or a name that has been thrown out, um, go ahead and or let let me know, and you can try to find that person in this din. Um, uh, so that use the same order. Even Kachi, is there anyone that Kachi is specifically or a domain that you're specifically listening listening for? I can go through the divine domain divine domains if you would like. Because um, they do relate to the cl- relate to clerics, Arcana, uh, who you all know is Kistic, Death, Forge, Grave, Knowledge, Life, Light, who was Senna, uh, Nature, who was Marilyn, Order, Peace, Tempest, Trickery, and War. Uh, and Peace, you know, is uh, Loam Underfoot. Can you go through those one more time? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 
Um, so there's Arcana, who is Kistic the Mystic, who is a pirate member of the Keepers. Uh, the Death Domain, the Forge Domain, Grave, <laughs> Knowledge, Life, Light, who is Senna. You know, you've heard that name. Nature is Marilyn. Um, feels like she is not one of the ones who is calling you in this moment. Um, order, Peace, who is Loam Underfoot, who is from Morales, Tempest, Trickery, and War. Twilight being Violette, who is no longer here. Um, just because we just talked about him, I would look for Loam. Uh, you are like almost you're listening, trying to listen for something like someone familiar. Um, you know that like okay, it's this halfling. Um, you've heard stories about like their healing abilities. Okay, cool. Let's go for this. Um, give me a perception check. Five. Uh, five. You begin to wander in the direction that you believe. Um, like this, vo- you hear like a small voice, kind of coming. You're putting together the, the pieces of the story that you remember. Um, but as you're walking, you're thinking like, yeah, it's he's this halfling. Wait, is it he, she, they? I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything about them, really. Uh, and so you're wandering in a direction, but you're not quite sure. You know, uh, you, haven't, you haven't gotten a visual yet, but you do get the sense that you were heading in a direction for certain. Uh, I'll continue with that for now. Um, you hear uh, a few, a handful of voices, uh, Kachi, all speaking in a similar way. Uh, maybe you've walked in the domains that are similar to peace, peace, knowledge, uh, all of these things, these le- more passive domains speaking to uh, to you. Um, there's one uh, like 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 light lilted, uh, almost like a monotone feminine voice that you are hearing louder than others. Uh, fear can drive people to do some wild things. In the face of fear, offer a haven, a shred of protection. Where do you feel safe? No, that's a really odd question for me. Why do you gotta ask me this stuff? Oh, God. Uh, okay, we're being honest. We're being honest. I don't. I, we're not tricking. We're uh, tricking. And I'll let you think about that as we. Uh, yeah, thank as you. Gwen, you begin to find your direction. <laughs> it seems fair. Um, Gwen, is there uh, a particular uh, per- name that we've thrown out, or a domain that you're interested in uh, <laughs> heading towards or looking for? Yeah, I'm of two minds. I think overall, I think I'm either Arcana because that's what I don't know, or order because that's like what i'm seeking i feel so i'm kind of open to both but i'm if it's fear i'm probably thinking arcana because that's what i'm afraid of (laughs) um of course (laughs) because as you like as you start just wandering like not knowing who you're listening for necessarily you're just wandering in a direction uh, you begin to hear this voice uh as well um kind of you hear it almost like in unison kind of coming from this like still like almost like like both these voices have this air of authority to them. One feels blunt, one feels a little bit airy and like um, like otherworldly as it talks, uh, but it, it speaks the same thing to you. Um, uh, fear can drive a lot of choices, whether you overcome it or embrace it. Offer your vision of protection. Where do you feel safe? as you begin to wander in this direction. Uh, Trigger as well. Um, Is there a name or a voice or a domain that you're feeling called to? I feel like I'm wandering next to Gwyn, and I was like, no, Gwyn, I want to talk to the pirate. You can't, I want to talk. And I don't, I don't, am I allowed to also pursue Kistik? Yeah, you begin walking in the same direction as Gwyn. Um, you hear this kind of wispy, otherworldly voice calling to you um, from this direction. Give me a perception check. Uh, dirty 20. 
Um, dirty twenty. You, uh, you, um, <clears throat> Gwyn, uh, guiding by domains alone, is just wandering kind of through the darkness. Uh, Trigger, you are able to spy something a little more specific. Uh, you see a large figure, like the outline of a figure, kind of like the light bouncing off of them. Probably seven, eight, maybe even taller. Um, this figure. Um, standing very tall. It's hard to make out like their body shape even, but you do see this enormous set of horns kind of growing out to the side. And even like here, you can see like the twinkling and like jingling of like chains and beads um, with every time they begin to speak and offer this challenge to you. One that resonates between both you and Gwyn. Um, you're kind of hearing it in the same time, the same space, um, as you guys are kind of walking in the same direction, having left Kachi kind of going in a different direction. Uh, offer a haven. Fear can fuel incredible deeds and tasks. Tell me, when did you feel safe? Where do you feel safe? Uh, Trigger, you kind of feel this voice, this coming from this like enormous figure in the distance. <clears throat> uh, Kachi, um, resonating on loams, potentially. Uh, words to you. Um, what uh, what location, what comes to mind for Kachi when thinking about uh, uh, a, a place that's safe from fear? Kachi keeps trying to think of, he keeps trying to put the image in his mind of being isolated and by himself and like just him and like shadow. But what keeps coming to the forefront like the more he tries to force this thought is like top of the trees sunshine coming in like family um and he's like no i don't like i don't want that i no, i'm good i'm alone i'm fine i'm free i'm here doing what i want to do and it's just like that thought it keeps like no that's wrong you were like your best like this it keeps like coming to the forefront yeah this idea of being surrounded by your family in the treetops of Morales, you know that this place feels safe. But like you said, you are feeling like this like place of shadow, standing in the shadow of your exceptional family is a challenge in and of itself. As safe as they make you feel, they still may leave you behind. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you two, having offered up this fear, you see... Uh, even like if you're like naturally instinct is to kind of look to the treetops of these trees and you suddenly realize like that's not where I need to be going right now. If I'm trying to say no to this, what else is there? And you look to the ground as unnatural as it may be for an owlin and you see a very small figure sitting on a uh, stump. Once again, you feel the out, you see the outline of this figure. Um, fairly slight. Uh, this one, too, you see has a very small horn kind of growing in one direction. And the shape of, like, the very shape of their face looks odd. Um, but you haven't quite reached them yet. Uh, Gwyn, heading in the direction, kind of called to Arcana and to Order, um, moving in this direction, um, channeling your fear, or you know, your fear in a sense of protection in that fear where did you f last feel safe um where did i last feel safe That's or where so do fun. you feel safe if you need to feel where safe what do you do think I, of? I think it's funny i think the first gut instinct is i've never felt safe right like there's like um a sense of uh like what? Like I, I've never had that. I but I will have it. And so I think when I think of the first time I felt safe in a long time, um, we're going like full like fake on a high rise tower, um, lavish insides, right? And it's almost like the first time I really ever saw like what, what I consider in my head like my bird cage, like this all inclusive everything I could ever want, granted, gifted magically to me. <laughs> Uh, and I was like, oh my God, I've done it. I have made it. I am safe and can be cared for. You're remembering back to this like high rise, this place of security. Not only were you like immediately, you had gone from a place of danger to a place of safety, but it was probably the first time you didn't have to worry about things. Right. There's no worry right. about the safety of having your store robbed. There's no worry about where food was going to come from. 
it's a sense of security and safety within that um, uh, as you kind of embrace this fear um, you begin to see forms take shape you see this large figure with these horns and chains kind of dangling from um, the antlers of this figure uh, that, ha- that Trigger has also seen. You may, you may even like notice Trigger staring off in this direction, um, but you begin to see this like another shape off in the distance, uh, almost alarmingly still as they're kind of standing and staring in this direction. The silhouette of kind of this like sailor hat uh, illuminated kind of in this space here. Um, with uh, this in mind, uh, thinking here, Gwen. Uh, is there a particular direction you're called towards still? Arcana? Order? Or is there something else that this sort of sense of safety has created? It's funny, because now I'm like, life <laughs> domain. Because it's like anything to live. But then I'm like, that's grave. That's death. And so, I again, I think it go- I, I actually think now I'm going towards order. It's like I'm so desperate for control that I'm kind of leaning that way now i think excellent like yeah, it's like, oh, arcana is reminding me like this is my fear this is not my safe place i should be uh, leaving you see this figure off in the distance this like still figure unflinching in the face of all of this this madness and magic and you remember living in this place of stillness you didn't have to worry about outside factors you wish you could be this still without having to worry and you begin wandering towards this domain uh trigger um this massive looming centaur uh is looking in your direction and uh in, in inquiring what uh fear uh instills in you and wondering what makes you feel safe yeah um i think It's kind of tricky because you have to pick and choose, but in my mind, I know where I want to be and I know it's on um, the the ship. And I think it's the, there are times when the ship doesn't feel safe, but uh, the times when I felt safe, this was actually like during a raid when it would be, we'd be like, so I'm part of something that's so powerful and like, so like, the Cyclops and, our, and the whole crew, like we are unstoppable, um, which is why I kind of, I, I kind of feel as though like I get something out of the corner of my eye, like, and it's um, like, I kind of feel as though I'm a little drawn to the idea of war. <laughs> um, if that's at all possible, I know yeah. I kind of said it was, it was going off in that direction, but I, I think there's something about just the, the times that I felt safest is I've been part of something that's destructive. Um, feels kind of right. Uh, yeah, you like looking at this this like magical figure. It doesn't quite feel right. This idea of being comforted by power or something like that. Like when things are moving, there's tumultuous times in the middle of a raid. In the middle of a storm is when you felt most secure, and you feel uh, drawn to. <sighs> This idea of war as well, this like sense of prowess, the sense of glory that kind of comes with it. Uh, and you be, kind of begin to like, things begin to shift. You're not sure which direction you're being called for. And sort of like the sh- shadows begin to lengthen and swirl once again, giving you a sense of like freedom and choice in this. Um, and once again, you hear more voices begin to carry throughout this whole place. Um, uh, Gwyn and Kachi, your voices are a little bit more stable. Uh, Trigger, it feels like people are shouting orders in the middle of a raid. Like you're getting bits and pieces of this information shouted over you. Um, and you're just hearing, um, you're hearing like harm, damage, hurt, like almost like accusations kind of flooding your way. Um, um, for those of you who are getting a little bit more uh, clear communication, um, you hear through the like unnerving silence that surrounds you it's easy to go overboard if we're to make a pact I need to know what you're capable of what hurt have you caused and you feel like uh, Kachi as like you're looking forward you like are in arm's reach of this figure now you see these kind of like 
empty blue eyes looking towards you. Uh, Gwyn, kind of like choosing this sort of like order domain, as you walk closer, you see that there's a almost like a beacon, this like lantern kind of lighting you, illuminating you, almost blinding you as you get closer and closer as this figure is staring at you with this unnerving stillness, um, saying the exact same thing. What hurt have you caused? Uh, trigger. You're hearing multiple voices. Um, who have you hurt? What happened to you? You've killed people before. What hurt have you caused? Is the like uh, the chorus that you're hearing around you um, as these figures are beginning are attempting to uh, ask a final question, sussing out the kind of person that you might be. Um, this they're not asking you to list your sins. It's uh, almost like what hurt have you caused that sits with you? Um, did you hurt someone's feelings? Did you kill someone you didn't mean to? Did you betray someone? It's that level of like, what is the hurt? Like what, as understood by you, what hurt have you caused someone? I think Kachi. thinks on a few different things. Uh, pranks things to like get back at, you know, brother and sister trying to, you know, feel like I belong to try to mean something. But uh, I think for the first time since leaving, he kind of like goes back to him leaving, kind of like on like little to no notice and like wondering what that must have felt like like that unknown like i don't know what pain i caused because i don't i did not want to be there to see it um and like just thinking like oh they probably are better off without me but then thinking like i want to be in the shadow but what if what if i have now cast a bigger shadow by leaving this like hurt this possibility that you've hurt the people that you that were your source of protection mm -hmm. them not knowing where you are them being worried for you them feeling responsible for your leaving um as you walk closer and closer out leaving the uh safety of these woods behind um facing down this figure uh here with you uh kachi you uh feel kind of like this like almost like your like eyes have like closed in the memory of this remembrance as you kind of like shift your gaze down and you feel this like reassuring kind of hand on your shoulder snapping you back out of it as uh thrive underfoot this half green-haired halfling wearing like this like a mask that's made out of a skull on half of her face uh, looks in your direction, um, kind of these like glassy blue eyes, uh, seemingly having lost her ability to see some time ago. Um, like places a hand on your shoulder. As one small figure in a large city. I think you're a hero. I can stand behind Kachi. Low underfoot. If you're willing to do, uh, take on my challenge, I'll give you my power. Oh my god, I totally assumed that was on me. I am so sorry. I just expected that you, yes, I will accept. Um, yeah, absolutely. No sweat, kid. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Kachi, uh, with that, uh, you kind of like, almost like you've woken up from a dream with inside of a dream. Uh, you are back uh, sitting with Marilyn, this amulet in front of you glowing. And you can almost like feel this astral presence of loam behind you um, as this uh, as this pact. Uh, not, not pact. Pact. Not pact in the warlock sense. Agreement uh, is being made uh, as we'll decide what that is in a moment. Um, so you'll be like, oh shit, another dream battle. 
Uh, you're all surprisingly multi-class warlocks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> um, so what hurt have you caused, Gwyn or Trigger, who is, uh, if anyone is being called to called to share? Yeah. Um, I've killed dozens with my arrows. I've poisoned the water supply of at least six people. And I've lied to the innocent, and I've stolen from the poor, and I've, you know, done a lot. But I think the grandest hurt of all that I've I've done is I am directly the cause or responsible for one of the greatest do-gooders, leaders, soldiers that the world has ever seen being feeble-minded and no longer able to help. And I've removed good in the world. I do think I've cleansed a lot of bad, or neutral at least, but I have kept around good that can no longer help. And I think that is the worst thing I've done. Um, you kind of offer this up and not a reassuring hand on your shoulder, but sort of a like a whirring of gears before you. <laughs> we all must do what we need to to continue to survive. Gwyn, Tasha Gwyn, you have you have taken the world, taken a warrior from the world, and done things in the nature of serving yourself. I offer up to you a challenge. Use your skills of survival in the name of something grander I can offer this to you and trust Tasha Gwyn that I too have done a great many of terrible things in the name of grand order to come some of which I am still 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 doing now I understand your plight. Uh, as you uh, connect with this figure, not one who offers you any reassurance of any kind, uh, okay. you stare into sort of the uh, like shiny carapace of a steel warforged in a tri-corner hat, um, looking back at you. I am Rattle McFarthy. I am the the keeper of order, a fitting role, and one that perhaps may guide you. Take my challenge, as I know you are likely to do, and you can thrive on some of my power. Of course. I just need to enact like some revenge and then I, I, but I think that's part of it. Resetting the scales. Rebalancing. Rebalancing. Recalculating. Rebalancing. This I can get behind. <laughs> uh, as Gwen, you too feel this uh, presence behind you as you are back with Marilyn kind of in the grove here. Interesting. Uh, trigger this challenge is put forth to you. Uh, you currently, who is the most lost, staring at these uh, domains before you, uh, thinking of this pirate in the arcane direction, but curious about the other domains. Um, the uh, 
crew, the gap, the uh, figures kind of gathered around you. Some of the voices you are no longer hearing. Those, of course, of Loam and uh, Rattle. Um, but you are hearing lots of other voices around you. The choices seem to be uh, set before you as the person who has yet to discover who they will make a deal with. Uh, when this uh, sort of string of questioning is pitched to you, Trigger, what comes to mind? This idea of hurt and responsibility. What hurt is it that you've caused? Oh, I, I mean, I'm I'm a pirate, so I've I've killed like loads of people. Um, probably shot a couple in the in uh, in I saw I shot somebody in the back of the leg once, and I know like that that was not going to heal very well. Um, uh, and and I'm pretty sure I got somebody in the face, but they also looked really ugly beforehand, so that could have just been how they looked before. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm a vicious fucking killing machine. Um, you, like, you offer up this, like, this is the hurt that you've caused. Um, you feel several voices kind of responding to you in this moment. The one that you seem to be, like, you have, like, focused on for this moment. <clears throat> uh, you hear, um, like, the first thing you hear is kind of this, like, the... I don't want to say squelching again, but it is sort of this <laughs> wet <you>. sound. <laughs> Hurst. To pick the word, I mean. That you don't understand. That's too deep. Hurt. That you don't understand. Oh. Isn't really hurt. It's more of an accident. <laughs> War is something you seek. Learn to kill for a reason. And we can make a deal, kid. I take this shit seriously. If you're not ready for that, Find someone else. I'm, I'm ready. I'll kill somebody right now. Um, you offer this uh, willingness, and um, out of the darkness, where is that fucking token? <laughs> Scrolling yeah. back. Please give me a visual display of what the okay. squelching. Okay. <laughs> I, I think what are you? What I love most is that I know that Matt has a token for all of these different domains, and we only get the C three. Um, I think I may have forgotten to send it. Send this one over. Uh, <gasps> Alan, you spoke too confidently. I did. I was too confident. Oh no! Sorry, My faith. And Does I, she look that idea like... I had of like I could just make up twelve or fourteen NPCs right now? I can draw them all by our next session. Does it look like Celia from Monsters, Inc.? That's all I want to know. Uh, oddly, oddly, yes. Yes! Um, out of the darkness trigger, um, this pink tank tentacle snakes its way in your direction. Oh, we're going to get along just fine. Um, and almost like beckoning you, inviting you to some extent as it like kind of coils around you in a way that feels both uh, threatening, but also feels like the strangest handshake you have ever received. Oh God. This oh. tentacled figure, like as it reaches through the trees and uh, this uh, this wetness uh, continues to purvey you as they offer you the sort of challenge um, as being the uh, presumably the most violent of the uh, keepers being the one that attracts you, uh, Trigger, which I should have anticipated. Uh, as you get drawn forward into the domain of this figure. 
I may have to take uh, these figures gathering here, this purple tentacled face with these glowing yellow eyes, a uh, pirate bandana tied around their head, holding back some of these tentacles, like an octopus on top of a woman's body, this sword at their side, as you are like, this tentacle wraps like from their jaw around your hand. Um, are you the Cyclops' girlfriend? Never. Noted. And in a moment, Trigger, you are back with your friends gathered here with Marilyn, these three figures behind you, ready to cement this pact with this magical amulet. That is where we will take our break for tonight. Ooh. We'll be back oh, shortly. Crazy. Break in break game. Perfect. Um, can I get can I get um pronouns for Loam? Uh, Loam is she her. Spelling? She her. And L O M. L O A M. A M. Oh, it's not like what um like dirt. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Loam. She her for octopus woman. Yes. Thank you. What is the other child's name? Bash kettle. Bash what? Clock?